Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I have to tell you guys, I have been in major crunch mode since the Okeechobee tournament, so I'm filming this uh, two days before I have to leave for Clarks Hill Lake. So I only had about 10 days in between. During that 10 day, days, we launched Core Tackle, which has done amazingly well, so I've been spending a ton of time trying to get orders out resolve some issues with the website, do some things just to make sure that everyone has a good experience. I am definitely overwhelmed with the amount of orders that have come in. Guys, it's been phenomenal. You guys are uh, truly awesome. I think you're going to love the hover rig. And what this is going to do is allow us to come out with the Tush swim baits. So that'll be coming out hopefully shortly as well. So stay tuned for that. But uh, in the meantime, We've got more jigs being made, more jigs coming. While I'm at uh, Clark's Hill, we'll still be having orders going out. I've got some people who are going to help me, so hopefully we can catch up. But it still might take up to four weeks for some of the orders that are rolling in right now, just to keep you guys updated. But the video today, I wanted to talk about Clark's Hill because I need to prep for Clark's Hill. I've got to rig some rods up. I do not like to get to the lake and not have at least what I consider to be my starting rods rigged and ready to go. So I got to take some time and get this done now, but I wanted to film a video for you guys to kind of go over what baits I think are going to be the players. You know, we've had a warming trend over the past week or so down in that region of the country. They're actually having some days up to like 80 degrees. They've had a bunch of rain, so I'm expecting the, the lake to be... Uh, pretty much at full pool or really close to full pool. I think as of right now, it's about a foot, foot and a half below, but it's rising. And I expect the water to be a little bit off colored. So I think if you want to fish clear water down by the dam, you can do that. If you want to fish muddier water up any of the rivers there, you can probably find some really off colored water, like chocolate mud colored water. So I, I've got this internal feeling that this is going to be a really good crankbait tournament. So I'm going into this with the idea that I'm going to throw a bunch of crankbaits. Um, so I'm going to have a bunch of them rigged up. But having said that, it is a blueback herring lake. So one of the things that I know will be going on is an early morning drain bite. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find a couple of drains. You know, a drain is just basically a small creek arm. You've got deep water that goes up to the back. And generally what happens is uh, some of the blueback herrings will push back in them or the bass will push the blueback herring or shad back into them and they kind of corner them in these drains and then they feed on them. So if you can find a good drain, you can catch a limit really quickly with the chance of catching a big fish as well. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for that to spend the first hour or so of each day of the tournament trying to catch a secure, a good limit or a, a you know, a solid limit. And then at that point, go fish more for largemouth um, with crankbaits, maybe some jigs, maybe some bigger swim baits, things like that that might generate a bigger bite from some of those pre-spawn females that are starting to move up. So we will see. But the problem with this is anytime you've got a fishery where you've got clear water, dirty water, shallow water, deep water, uh, spotted bass, largemouth, ye, 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 I could rig up about 50 different rods for this tournament. So I don't want to do that. I generally like to go with probably about 15 rods rigged up. I'll choose, you know, based on what I'm doing, I might have eight rods out and then I might do a full swap later in the day. But let's talk a little bit about the baits that I've got here. Now, like I said, I'm not planning on spending a ton of time or I can't really spend a ton of time fishing the drain bite because that, you know, you get a couple hours each day in practice, maybe a couple hours in the tournament. I'm going to keep that pretty simple. You know, anytime you're fishing a drain, your jerk baits are going to be key. Now, generally speaking, when I go to practice, I start off with the Shad Filet color in this Berkeley Stunna. If you like to use Mega Bass, it's the Elegy Bone color. Uh, really, it's just one of those colors that I like to start with because you can fish it in dirty water, you can fish it in clear water, and then I can adjust based on what the actual water looks like when I get there. But a jerk bait is going to be a key bait for that, uh, as well as, you know, a small swim bait, a little 3.3 style swimmer. That's going to be another really good bait for that. I may end up having like a underspin rigged up, may end up having, you know, a fluke, something like that along the line. But those will be my two main search baits. If I 
if I find something good that I plan on fishing in the tournament, I'll probably have those other baits rigged up just as well so I can cover some more water with it. One other bait that I do like to throw in those drains is a lipless crankbait. This is an uh, old Excalibur XRK50. This is the ghost color, I believe is what it's called. One of my favorite colors. If you can find them, pick them up. I've caught a lot of my top 10 overall biggest largemouth have been on that exact bait and color. So that's going to be uh, the morning for me. At that point, then I'm going to switch over to probably trying to fish some of the channel swing banks, some points, uh, clay points, isolated rock, uh, you know, hopefully find a few laydowns that are on the bank as well. And that's going to be mostly crankbait fishing. And I've got three that I'm going to have rigged up to start. And they're all kind of based on depth. I've got a little Fritz Side 5 Spring Craw color, just a really good overall color. Uh, this bait runs a couple of feet deep, so it's going to be more for fishing really shallow points, fishing some very shallow uh, rock. Sometimes you get some rock that tapers off and is only in a couple of feet. Those are good places to throw that little Fritz Side, uh, maybe a shallow stump flat, things like that. As the water starts to get a little deeper, that's when I like to go, and I've talked about this bait a lot recently, the Duo Realis M62 5A in the Red Tiger color, I think is what it's called. Uh, this bait runs down to like, it runs down to I'd say four feet pretty good. So that'll be one that I like to mix in as well as the Berkeley Money Badger. Uh, this is the size six and a quarter, so it gets down close to 10 feet. Uh, it's a really good, sized bait. Now, if you go a little bit bigger in the money badgers, you don't get much more depth. You get a little bit bigger body, but that's about it. So I'm going to start with the six, uh, I think it's the six and a quarter size, and then we'll go from there. This is just one of their, I think it's the green craw orange tail is what they call it. Really good spring color. You know, we know from the old days, one of the most popular old wiggle warts, which was kind of the OG of springtime cranking is that phantom green craw. So uh, we see a lot of similar style colors now. This one is not translucent necessarily like the Phantom Green Craw, but it's still got a similar kind of tone to it, which is what I like. And they actually do have a color that I have on the wall that's pretty similar to that. So I'll be carrying that. But those, those three baits are going to be what I start with. I will be rotating crankbaits and crankbait colors significantly based on watercolor. Um, and I plan on having three to five rods rigged with crankbaits. So those are the ones I know I'm going to start with. And I'll add to them as I go. I probably will have three rods for practice. As the tournament comes, if the crankbait bite is there, I'll probably have five rods for the crankbait in, in practice. Uh, one other thing that I know I'm going to do is I'm going to run into some docks when I'm fishing there. The lake does not have a ton of docks like Lake Hartwell, which is connected to does. But it does have a bunch of docks, a bunch of laydowns, and at that point, I know I'm going to have this little Kitek tungsten casting jig rigged up with a little chunk trailer. Uh, I probably will have one with a weed guard, just because if I'm fishing floating docks, there's going to be a bunch of cables, things like that. Uh, but I do love to have a jig, usually a green pumpkin, orangish colored jig during the uh, springtime for me, that I can flip around docks, flip around isolated laydowns. Even it, walk it down a little bit of chunk rock if I can find some of the chunk rock that I like to fish with the jig. The other bait I'll be throwing on those docks will be the core tackle hover rig with a flat worm on it. Most likely I may switch over to a five inch general just based on what I'm seeing the fish are doing and how deep the docks are going to be. That's one thing I'm not overly familiar with. I'm expecting some of these docks to be shallower, some of them to be over 30, 40 foot of water. So I may have two of them rigged up, one in the eighth ounce, one in the 364th, but I do expect this to be a good bait to be flipping around the docks, sliding, you know, to skip under the docks and generate a few bites. The other bait I could see doing with that too, is I want to try to work in some bigger swim baits. This is a big uh, seven inch bass tricks, hollow belly. And I, I, feel like we're going to have some staging pre-spawners that are going to be setting up around some of the docks and one of the best ways to trigger those fish is with a big swim bait so i could see throwing the big hollow belly by bass tricks i could see throwing some of the glide baits that i like to throw uh, it's just again going to be one of those things i want to feel out so i'll i'll have one rod rigged for that 
and then I'll rotate bait significantly during practice to find the, the bait that I feel like is, is working the best or generating the most interest. But I do think that that's going to be something come tournament time where it could generate one or two good bites throughout the course of the day that can really shoot you up the, the leaderboard. So I'm going to definitely pay attention to that. The last thing that I think might come into play that I did not mention in the beginning, though, was with the dirty water, there are a lot of creeks and rivers that flow into this that have a lot of big flat back ends with bushes and flooded you know, timber and debris. And if it's anything like Hartwell and it's connected to Hartwell, we know that that can be a player. I don't know that we're far enough along in the spring for that to happen, but because we are having warm, warm weather, I think we might see some fe people fishing some bushes. And I think there's a couple of baits to do that with. One, again, I think you can flip the jig, but I think you're going to see more people using their moving baits. So I've got here two different spinner baits. Again, I'm going to be rotating spinner baits, but I could see throwing a traditional just straight white color, double, uh, double willow leaf blade. This is if the water's a little bit cleaner, but if the water is really dirty in those areas, then I would go with a double Colorado with the coleslaw colored uh, skirt with an actual boot tail trailer, just something to create more motion. But I do think a spinner bait will be good in those areas. Those are both the uh, Berkeley spinner baits. The uh, power spin, I believe is what they're called, or power blade. Uh, and I'll put, I'll put links to all these up in the video description for you if you want to check them out yourself. But then I also think you might see your vibrating jigs. This is the Berkeley slobber knocker, which I like to throw around wood and bushes because it comes through better. It does not get snagged up as much. So I'll probably have one of these rigged. And then last but not least, I'm going to throw a buzz bait. I think if the water temperatures are warm enough or we get some good, bright, sunny days, uh, I think you could see that come into play. This is a Berkeley, the deal, four and a half inch around the back, threaded up onto a Dirty Jigs Canterbury Pro Buzz buzz bait, which is one of the ones that I like to throw. So it's going to be one of those events, guys, where I have a pile of rods. If I had to guess what's going to be the biggest player for this event, I think you're going to see guys do really well if they've got an early morning drain that they can find and catch a good limit, you know, a solid limit, 10 to 12 pounds out of with maybe one, one or two decent weigh-in fish. And then they go spend the next six hours probably throwing a crankbait or a jig fishing, you know, those those transition zones. I think that's where we're going to see the biggest player. But I want to be ready with the baits in case they are way up in the bushes. And I want to be ready with the drain baits. So I'm going to have a bunch of rods, which means I have a lot of work to get done before I get out of here so that I can get back to shipping core tackle orders. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section how you think I'll end up doing. Like I said, I'm going to probably air this video It'll probably be about a week from now during practice sometime. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. Stay tuned. New video coming tomorrow.